Hey everybody, welcome back to Intrepid Exotics. So we had a viewer request a video uh, specifically on reading a snake's behavior. So this was a really good idea. I think what we're going to do is we're going to look at several different species. We're going to go through the handling process from start to finish and with each one of them. And we're going to look at their behaviors, kind of see what they mean, and kind of see how you go about breaking through some negative behaviors and really taking advantage of the positive state of mind. We've got a whole myriad of animals here to work with, so it should be interesting. We'll be right back on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. So when we talk about reading a snake's behavior, what we're trying to do is we're trying to determine what frame of mind they're in. Uh, some of you guys may already know the four states of mind that you'll typically find a snake in, and that is they're either sleeping, they're either in food mode, they're defensive or afraid, or they're in thinking mode. And you can throw a fifth one in there too for breeding behavior because hormones will do crazy things to everything. Um, you know, snakes, they're not immune to this either. Breeding behaviors can make some males real bitey, really aggressive. So you've got to kind of keep an eye on that too. But essentially, those are the four states that you're going to find them in. Now, of course, we want to get them in thinking and exploration mode. We want to get their mind working. We want to get them into you know being more extroverted uh, most most times when we find our snakes we're going to find them laying in some place just minding their own business curled up and we've got to be able to look in there and manage their frame of mind a little bit so i'm going to go ahead and start today with our little female burmese python i'm going to going to go with her i'm going to go down and show some behaviors on our little female retic rescue that we got and probably going to go into the green tree python too before we go downstairs and we'll look at some behaviors on the bigger snakes too we're also going to mess with uh mr silent bob here the sri lankan so, so we should have a pretty good view of our girl athena here again she's in a motionless state she could be sleeping she could just be checking us out to see what's going on there we go now you see just as soon as she's seen me do that now she's all perked up. She had a couple fairly decent tongue flicks there. Now this could really be construed as a food response. Um, and it probably is because she is a chow hound. Um, she, she will not go about missing a meal. But the cool thing about the snakes that I've got that are so socialized and used to handling is that when I pull this down and let her out and she sees that there's no food there, this is a behavior that you'll see a lot of times with my animals. They'll stop and they'll just kind of hang their head out. You know, the tongue starts kind of going. And this is a good sign. She's a fairly comfortable, fairly relaxed snake. But the thing is, is you want to make sure, even if you think, you know, they're really mellow and you trust them and all that stuff, I always want to get them moving. I want to see a 100% clear sign that this snake is in interactive mode. So even though her bite from her wouldn't be a big deal, you know, it may stress her out. It may be a big deal to her, especially if it was a food response and you got to mess with, you know, stress them out and get them off of you and stuff. So what I like to do is just go right next to her head. I just want to get her moving. I want to do something that's going to get her there. And now I've got my hand on them. Once you've got your hand on their body, they're fairly certain it's not going to be um, a meal in there. And with her, you should see her starting to do some nice long tongue flicks and stuff like that. But right now I'm touching her. She's really chill. She is starting to flatten her body out a little bit. So that shows she's a little bit annoyed with that. But what you got to do is you just, you don't entertain that. Once you determine that they don't have that food response, and you just go in and you pick them out. And you can see her behaviors, those really long tongue flicks. She is 100% in thinking mode right now. 
she's out she's used to being handled so and this is one of those girls where I've had enough interactions with where I trust her implicitly as soon as I see that she's got those uh, those really long tongue flicks like that and I see that her frame of mind is thinking and she's not looking for food or anything um, she doesn't really get scared I've had her since a baby and uh, haven't I so yeah and this is what you want to get with all of them you want to get them to that point where they're moving around of their own volition you know you see those long tongue flicks and so forth this is a thinking comfortable snake uh, and this is this is the state that we look to get him in. You could see she was a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit um, not wanting to be messed with there when I first went in because as I was rubbing her, you know, she's flattening her body down, which is a sign that they're a little bit annoyed. But it's all those little things that you put together when you're when you're working with them. And the important part of that, the really important part of that, is that when. When you start seeing those little signs, like they're being defensive, or if they're a little bit nervous, or if they're trying to go back in their enclosure, which is cool, you can go back in there. Is you just want to do little subtle things in order to get them into that thinking mode like that. You know, just like her. She was sitting there, she was motionless, and then all of a sudden she's up and it's like, oh, does she have a food response? Okay, well... No, she doesn't because she's just sitting there and you just kind of push her head out of the way. And once you start seeing those little negative things, you can turn those into a positive real easy just by being really confident. I use the snake hook because it just helps to avoid mistakes. You know, like I said, not worried about her biting, but when you use the hook and you just kind of use it to block your hand a little bit as you're going in, and as soon as you get your hand on them, especially if it's a fairly socialized animal, they know what's coming. They know they're coming out. And you've just got to be confident with them. So that's some on her. We're going to go ahead and jump straight down here to Chloe and see what, uh, whoa. <laughs> and see, <laughs> that's why you've got to pay attention to what you're doing with them. Even as sweet as this girl is, it never even dawned on me that her head was right there. I was just putting her tail back in so that I could get the enclosure door closed. And as soon as I came up in front of her face like that, man, her head just bolted. And that could have real easily been a food response bite. So, yeah. Everybody can make mistakes. So now as you can see, we've got little Chloe in here. And she's tucked back there in her hide. This can be a little bit of a tricky situation trying to get them out of their hide like that. So, you know, of course, you don't see a whole lot of reaction from her. I know that she's awake because her head's moving just a little bit. So she knows I'm here. She's looking at me. And I'm not going to go in and just try and drag her out. Um, I am going to go a little bit and just touch her, see what she does. There we go. See those really fast tongue flicks like that? Um, she is looking for a meal right now. That's what those fast tongue flicks are. She's looking for a meal. She's looking to determine if there's anything to eat, whether there's something that she needs to strike at or not. And um, we want to get her past that. And it's always tricky to do. What I like to do whenever possible, when I've got one that's like this, is... I'll get around and I'll just kind of move her hide and then slowly take that hide off of her. Because you don't want to sit there and try and just jerk them out of there. Now her head's back there. She's not coming towards the front. I'm not too terribly worried about her. So I'm going to come in, just get my hand on her. And you can see she's starting to run. As soon as she starts to run a little bit, you just pick her right out. This is the same fo the same thinking mode that Athena was in, except Athena was in a Burmese thinking mode, and this is a reticulated python thinking mode, <laughs> which means as soon as she comes out, she's thinking she wants to get into everything. 
and she's a little sweet girl, man. And um, we brought her out of quarantine uh, a couple weeks ago, and she's just been doing great. The only problem is the quarantine tank that she had put a little cut on her mouth right there. Um, and she didn't like it. She was pushing on it. But uh, it's just a little one. It's going to go away in a shed or two, something like that. But uh, other than that, she's doing really good. Really good girl. And see, a lot of people will get nervous when the snakes start moving faster like that. And they start moving faster on their head and, and things. But that's just a retick. You know, this is, this is their normal behavior. So, you see the way she's doing that? Just those really long tongue flicks. That's their way of exploring and checking things out. So, she's really happy. <laughs> Aren't you, girl? I'm going to go ahead and take her out a little bit later. And we'll spend some more time together. Get right, girl. You're such a sweet snake. See, she's hanging on there like she's a tree python. There you go, sweetie. Go back home. Let go of me. <laughs> and I don't force them really, just kind of let them go at their own pace. So. Now this one right here, looking at the green tree python, we've got nothing to go with on there. You know, if they're really inactive during the day, um, you'll, find, you'll find him really cruising around in there and stuff like that at night. But, again, there's nothing that we can work with with his body language except the fact that his tail is moving up there. So we know he's awake. And he's just kind of, again, silently kind of evaluating wondering if he's got to do anything so what i always like to do and you can see his his neck is in that s pattern right there i mean he can strike just from right there he could strike out to about where the end of my hook is at so we don't want to just go in there and startle him we always go in there you can see him recoiling just a little bit just a little bit just like that and I still don't see any tongue flicks or anything. So what I want to do is just get him going away. Until I see some indication that he's... There we go. Nice long tongue flicks. Now I can keep this right here. So that way everybody can relax. He starts pointing towards my hand. I'm just going to bump him away a little bit. Because you can see his tongue's going in the direction. And we're at here. I mean, you don't want to make it all last too long. So you just go in. You know, and that's why these re removable perches are so nice. Because you really will have a hard time going in there and getting these guys off of there. And trying to unwind them like that. So, with the green tree python. And see, you can see, again with this guy... His neck's still in that S'd up position right there, but he's a socialized snake. So as soon as he gets out and he kind of starts to see what's going on, you can see those, again, those long tongue flicks coming. And they're right, buddy. So I'm going to go ahead and get him off of here. The easiest way to get these guys off their perches is they'll kind of fold over it. So you just kind of come up underneath them. And especially with him, once he starts to go out and start exploring, you just got to be careful with the with the last couple inches of their tail because they're really they're really small vertebrae in there you can hurt them I will give them something else to wrap around besides the hey, get off the light you and then we can pull them right off the perch then he can go ahead and wrap around my arm there we go and see this is another instance where you go in, you're not really sure what their body language is telling you at first, and you just got to shift them into that thinking mindset like that. I mean, look at him. 
This is, a lot of people are kind of scared to handle green tree pythons because they're afraid that they're so bitey and whatnot. I can't get him to look at the camera. Let's see if we can do that. But I mean, look at his, look at his demeanor. Again, those long tongue flicks. He's just out exploring, perfectly comfortable, not stressed out at all. So. Look at it. See if we can get you a close up there, bud. See if we can get focused in on your eyes instead of mine. This is an awesome animal. <laughs> Absolutely love this guy. Let's go ahead and put your perch back up. I was holding you up like a flashlight. Get in there. Yep. Yeah, there you go, bud. Back home you go. Now you're all wrapped around my arm. Get on your perch. How's it good boy? Now we got several different species we're going to work with today. Right behind me is a Sri Lankan enclosure. Uh, he seems to be a fan favorite. Uh, got him not too long ago. We've got a lot of handling videos with him. So this may be a little bit repetitive for some folks that have seen it before. He really demonstrates some of the behaviors that people are really afraid of when you're looking at snakes. So we're going to go ahead and move in on him and I'll talk you through what we're doing. Now we're looking at this guy. He's comfortable. He's tucked into the spot that he's been in all day. And he knows we're here. He sees us, of course. He sees the light from the camera and whatnot. And there's no motion. There's no tongue flicking. He's like, okay, maybe this person doesn't see me. And right now, there's not really a whole lot of reaction. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in in front of his face. Oh, here we go. We're getting a little bit of tongue flicking here. And I can see he's starting to breathe a little bit heavier. Uh, that means that he's starting to get anxious, kind of wondering what's going to happen. There's a couple ways I can approach him. I can approach him directly from the front, let him see my hand. But the problem is when you're dealing with snakes, you know, he may have a hot food response. And it's really hard to tell with him right there. And since he is such a kind of flighty snake, I really don't want to do too much hook work with him. Um... Yeah, you know, these smaller snakes, the hook seems to really stress them out. So what I'm going to do is just get him moving in another direction. So I'm going to come in behind him. There we go. And get him moving. Now you can see how he's essing up right now. He's really defensive. I don't know if you can see in the video or not. Oh, there he goes. He's already striking. So let me see if we can get a really good... Come on. Let's see if we can get a really good view of him. He's going to be striking as I reach in here. If you see a snake with that disposition, you're pretty much guaranteed if you reach in there, you're going to get a bite. And what we're looking at is he's got those really short tongue flicks right now. He'll hold his tongue out and just kind of vibrate it. That's kind of his way of saying, okay, you need to leave me alone. Uh, also, the posture in his neck, the way he's backed up into the corner. Um, this is a really, really defensive snake. And he's not being mean. You know, this isn't aggression. This is just him really not knowing what's going on. So we're going to reach over and we're going to grab the snake hook. And we're going to use this just to kind of guide his head a little bit because I don't want to leave him alone after doing this. We really want to reach in. Get him out. There we go. There we go, bud. Let me back this camera up. So now that we've got him out, you can see his behavior's changed some. He's not striking anymore. Uh, he's not hissing. Now he's kind of starting to relax. He's kind of starting to think a little bit. And... 
this is the state that you want to get him into. I mean, you see how we transitioned him from defensive mode to thinking mode right here. Now, it wasn't as pretty as some may think it's going to be, but if you've got if you've got to work with your snakes and you've got to handle them, you've got to work through those tough times with them, just like we did here. You know, you see he's doing just fine right now, and uh, he is not terribly defensive, not really stressed out, which is really good for him. So that's a really good example of a really defensive snake. I'm going to go ahead and put him back in there. I'm going to put him back over on his warm side. So those are a couple of the behaviors that you're going to see when they're really defensive. I think I'm going to show you guys the hog nose real quick. Had her for a long time. She doesn't get handled a whole lot. But uh, she is a pretty sweet girl once you get her out. It's the whole getting her out thing that she uh, isn't always happy about. So I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. With her, she's not ever struck at me open mouth before. But she doesn't hesitate to bump me with that nose of hers. So typically with her, you know, She's got no tongue flicks right now. She's just looking really apprehensive. So again, just like everything else, there we go. You just get your hands on them. And then once you do that, pull them right out. I know. She's always grumpy at first. Always a grumpy little girl at first. <laughs> Are you going to relax now? maybe see and you can see see how her tongue is pointing towards me she's getting she's picking up the heat and smelling my hand with that you can see her tongue moving towards my hand you know, any other snake starts doing that when you're handling them uh, kind of get ready for a strike because that's not necessarily an ex an exploring tongue that is I'm checking to see where the threats are at tongue and ain't that right girl I know <laughs> hoggies are such hissy little such hissy little snakes there you go you know, she's relaxing a little bit. Tongue slowing down just a little bit. She's not flattened out like she was, trying to look like a cobra. There you go. So let's put her back. There you go, girl. <laughs> she's a good girl, whether she wants to be or not. Now we're going to do one more example today, and this is with my 16-foot male retic. Now I want to show you guys something. I've got this little snake hook, a little pet smart snake hook that's kind of wobbly. And I want to show you guys that you don't need to have a big 2x4 or a big pipe snake hook for these guys because you don't handle them with the hooks. You know. So right now looking at him, he's motionless. Looks like he's sleeping. So <clears throat> typically what happens is as soon as I Okay, so he's down for the count, I guess. <laughs> Normally he wakes up when he hears that thing. <clears throat> so I seen him start to move just a little bit when I opened up the door. Now one thing that you've got to remember is when a snake's like this, they could very easily wake up startled defensive in food mode so you want to make sure that you're giving them plenty of time to figure out what's going on and it's just little subtle touches and then watching their body language and how they respond to it and you can see he moved a little bit so he's not going to be terribly startled but what i'm doing is i'm just opening that glass just enough so that i can get in there and i can touch him and his head's still there, so if he instinctively turns around and takes a shot at me or something, we're pretty good. So all we do, let him know that we're here. 
Yeah, right, buddy. See? And now he's starting to recoil like he always does. And I like to start handling them from the opposite side. So since his head's over here, I'm going to go to the other side. Now what we want to do with these guys is just, since he's not giving me any indication of what his frame of mind is right now, I want to get him to tell me something. Um, you know, I've got to get him talking to me. The easiest way to do that is just get my hand on him. Yeah, he's going to recoil a little bit. He's really chill right now. There we go. Got a little huff out of him that time. And see, he's kind of throwing that body around. He's looking at me. He's like, I really don't want to be messed with right now. So I may end up going to the other side yet again. But there we go. Now see, the reason why I pulled back and stopped is because he's not showing me anything. Except, you know... His neck's assed up. There's no tongue flicks or nothing. So I'm going to come around the other side. There we go. Now we immediately went into almost thinking mode. He's kind of excited right now. And see? See this little flimsy snake hook? How he's pointing at me all assed up? Look at that. That's all I need to do. Just need to tap him. See how his tongue's starting to work now and he's starting to move away? That means he's getting in thinking mode. He kind of knows what's going on now. So we drop the hook and take him out. There you go, buddy. Ah. See, you know, all he's wanting to do now is just run. He either wants to run away from me or he wants to run out and start checking stuff out. And I'll let him run away since we're not handling him and we're just looking at behaviors and stuff like that. But that's how I'd start the interaction with him. So it's not always really easy to be crystal clear. You know, this is this, this is that. It just takes a lot of time and practice working with your animals. But as you can see, a lot of times when we first go to interact with them, it may not be as easy a transition into handling as we might like but whatever frame of mind that they're in one of the tricks to it is just figuring out how to shift their train of thought a little bit sometimes that's as easy as just moving their head just a little bit getting them moving so that you can see them starting to think starting to explore or starting to run um, other times you know particularly with the smaller snakes that are really skittish you know all you got to do is you let them know that you're in there and you try and be respectful, but you just got to go in and pick them up. And then once they're supported and you're handling them, then they'll start to calm down. But, um, you know, you'll see, just like with the uh, with Tigger, the big retake there, how I used that really tiny snake hook on him. It's not about force, it's about finesse. You know, you're, you're not going to go in there with that hook and tap and tap and tap and tap and drag them out of the way and stuff like that. All you need to do is just have something there that's not warm, that's not your hand, so that you can touch them and you can kind of shift their train of thought a little bit, get them from, you know, a grumpy, I'm sleeping mode, and I'm, I'm hungry, I'm feet in food mode or whatever, and just kind of tap their brain out of it a little bit and get it working. And whether they take off running or whether they take off and they want to start interacting with you and stuff like that, you kind of just guide their train of thought and then you can guide the rest of the interaction with them. Now there's some times, I mean, almost every one of these interactions so far, there was an opportunity for me to get bit. Even with the snakes that I've got, if you go in there wrong and you're not taking all of the proper steps to ensure that you can, that you're not gonna be in conflict with their instincts when you handle them. Um, <clears throat> you know, if I take somebody in here that's a novice that doesn't know how to work with my animals and they just start reaching in and trying to grab for that retic, real easy for them to make a mistake and a snake will bite them. Uh, you know, these guys, they're used to the way I handle them and stuff like that. They're used to me. They're smart enough to recognize me and stuff like that. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's not an exact science, but it's just like anything else. You know, when we talk about, um, you know, illnesses and stuff like that, you tend to look for more than one symptom. Um, and I look for more than one clue when I'm handling too. 
you know, just sitting there being motionless doesn't mean that they're getting ready to strike. It could just mean that they're trying to figure out how they want to feel. They're trying to figure out, okay, is there going to be a meal coming? Is this person going to attack me? You know, is it time to come out and play? And a lot of times they're just in that mode right there. So you've just got to guide them just a little bit, a little nudge, and get their mind working a little bit differently. Um, and you're looking for a couple different clues. You know, once I see those long tongue flicks and they're moving really kind of slow, they're not darting around, um, that's a really good indication that, you know, this snake's safe to handle. They're thinking they're not trying to eat anything. You know, if they've got a little bit faster tongue flicks and they're just kind of sitting there, um, or if they're holding it out, that means that they're apprehensive. They're getting, you know, they're using their sensory organs to establish what the threat is. And they're not afraid to strike at you. So there's a whole lot more. There's a whole lot of other animals that we can do this with. And we will. I'll be putting out some more videos on this. Uh, I want to go into a lot of interactions and just repetitive stuff. So that you guys can see. Um, you know, start getting used to seeing the behaviors and how I react to them. Uh, how I respond to them. Uh, there's a better word. Big difference between reacting and responding. Reacting is when I reach in and the snake starts to strike at me and I pull my hand back. That's my reaction. My response to that is to get my hook out, move their head a little bit, get my hands on them, and get them out so that we can finish that interaction on a good note. So a big difference between reaction and responding. We want to respond to whatever behaviors they show us and do so in a way that improves their behavior, makes it safer on us, makes it more comfortable for them. So we'll be doing this again. Just wanted to get a kind of almost longish video out about it um but i'll put out another one using different animals here in the next few days so you guys have an outstanding day and we'll see you next time on intrepid exotics